We have already seen the various theories and models that help us understand how bonding takes place in molecules. The last one we saw was VB theory which focuses on how atomic orbitals combine to give chemical bonds when a molecule is formed. On the other hand, molecular orbital theory explains bonding in terms of molecular orbitals which is formed by the combination of atomic orbitals. So in this video we are going to look at a problem on bond strength or how to figure out the bond order of various molecules using molecular orbital theory. So without any further delay, let's look at the question. Okay, so the question is which among the following has the highest bond order? And the options are C2+, O2 and NO+. Now in order to answer this question, we need to know how to compute bond order, right? Now bond order can be calculated as half into Nb minus Na where Nb is the number of electrons present in the bonding orbital and Na is the number of electrons present in the anti-bonding orbital. So let's use this formula and apply in each of these cases. Now in the case of C2+, plus, one carbon atom has 6 electrons and two carbon atoms would have 12 electrons but here we have a positive charge. That means C2 plus overall has a total of 11 electrons. So based on this if we write the electronic configuration of C2+, plus, it would be something like this. We have sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, sigma 2s2, sigma star 2s2, pi 2px2 and pi 2py1. Now we already know that from second chapter on structure of atom how electronic configuration of a molecule looks like in terms of atomic orbitals, correct? Now this is how the electronic configuration looks like in terms of molecular orbitals. So if you apply this formula to this electronic configuration you can calculate the bond order in this case as bond order is equal to half into number of electrons in the bonding orbitals is sigma 1s2, sigma 2s2, pi 2px2, pi 2py1. So that is a total of 7 electrons minus number of electrons in the anti-bonding orbitals is 4. So this gives us a total of 1.5. So the bond order of C2 plus is 1.5. Now have you thought about what a bond order of 1.5 would mean? Well physically it means that the two carbon atoms are held together by a bond that is stronger than a single bond but weaker than a double bond. Basically this means that the electrons in C2 plus are delocalized over the entire molecule as opposed to a normal covalent bond where the shared pair of electrons are mostly found in the region between the two atoms. This delocalization of electrons is one of the important features of molecular orbital theory and this is why we are allowed to have bond orders that are not exactly whole numbers. Let's now look at the next molecule which is oxygen. Oxygen has a total of 16 electrons and we write down the electronic configuration of this molecule it would be something like this. Sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, sigma 2s2, sigma star 2s2. Sigma 2pz appears before the pi 2px and pi 2py orbitals. Now if you compare this with the electronic configuration of C2 plus that we saw in the previous case, we can see that in the case of C2 plus, the pi 2px and pi 2py molecular orbitals get filled first. Which means these orbitals are lower in energy whereas in the case of oxygen we can see that sigma 2pz is lower in energy than pi 2px and pi 2py. Now this reversal in the energy of molecular orbitals takes place due to something that we call sp mixing. You see in the second period elements that are lighter than oxygen like lithium, beryllium, carbon, nitrogen have a relatively small energy difference between the 2s and the 2p orbitals. Now because of this small energy difference between these two atomic orbitals there is significant mixing between them and as a result of this 2s and 2p mixing the pi 2px and pi 2py molecular orbitals have lower energy than the sigma 2pz molecular orbital. And as we move towards oxygen and molecules which have higher number of electrons, the 2s orbitals become more stable and the energy difference between these two orbitals increases. 
the larger the energy difference between these two orbitals the less likely they are to mix because as we know for orbitals to mix they must have similar energies and this is why as we move to heavier elements or those systems which have more than 16 electrons the sp mixing becomes less likely to occur now coming back to a question based on this electronic configuration can you figure out the bond order of oxygen bond order is equal to half of number of electrons in the bonding orbitals which is 1 2 3 4 5 10 minus number of electrons in the antibonding orbitals which is 2 plus 2 4 and 6 so this gives us a bond order of 2 so let's look at the last part which is a heteronuclear system now in NO plus how do we calculate the total number of electrons the total number of electrons in NO plus would be some of the electrons present in nitrogen and oxygen minus 1 because here we have a positive charge so that is 7 plus 8 minus 1 would be 14 so the order of filling of molecular orbitals in NO plus would be similar to that of C2 plus and not O2 because O2 has 16 electrons and NO plus has only 14 electrons so the electronic configuration would be something like this sigma 1s2 sigma star 1s2 sigma 2s2 sigma star 2s2 and as you can see here the pi 2px and pi 2py orbitals are filled first whereas sigma 2pz orbital is filled later and this as i said before is due to the significant sp mixing now if you calculate the bond order it is half into number of electrons in the bonding orbital which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 electrons minus the number of electrons in the antibonding orbitals which is 4 and the bond order would be 3. So now we can conclude which among them has the highest bond order, right? C2 plus has a bond order of 1.5, O2 has a bond order of 2, NO plus has a bond order of 3. So therefore the winner here is NO plus.